should we just watch the entire iDubs video? I like I like watching iDubs videos because they're so information dense. It's like 10 minutes long, 10 to 20 minutes long. And it's usually so pathetic that I can just watch the entire thing and comment on it because it's funny. Yes, Edub. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Let's watch it. 14 minutes long. Hopefully it won't meander too much and I have enough to say. Hello, everyone. Hi. I have some bad news to share with you. Uh, I really don't want to share it. I, f I feel terrible. Uh, this year has been a rough one, but... I'm curious why... Okay, so to begin with, this entire apology video was spurred on months after... I think like a full month after Creator Class was ended. And he has to make some confessions about about Creator Clash, which makes me wonder why he chose to do it now at all. And there's a pretty good explanation for that. Uh, this is the path that I chose, so I think it's best to be transparent. For Creator Clash 2, you know, despite it being a fun event and despite good fights and a lot of creators sacrificing a lot of time, uh, money, and energy, uh, we lost... $250,000 on the event. The way that this typically works for anyone who's uh, unaware is that... So, that's his big announcement. That Creator Clash did not make money. In fact, it has lost a quarter of a million dollars, enough to buy a average family in the United States a nice home to live in. How did this happen? Well, he will explain, but the real question to ask is why is he announcing this now? And the answer is, is that a couple people who were, um, a log in the fuck out of I dubs during the creator class stuff, people who are like kind of Sam Hyde adjacent, uh, dig some digging. They decided to ask the charities that creator class two was supposed to finance and give money to, uh, have they received any money from creator class? And they confirmed that they had received no money from Creator Clash. And so they announced it. And then hours later, iDubs put out the statement about how they did not make any money. And it's really funny, because um, I believe that this video is spurred on directly by the fact that people caught him out on his lie that he had given money to charity, and that was the entire point of Creator Clash too. And then if you look at the background of his room, uh, you'll notice that it's in a state of not being a room. There's shit on the floor. It looks like he's moving out. He, now they have, I think in these, between these and items, they have like four houses together. So they might be selling a house or, or I think he's moving back to Canada. So he's like in a state of moving out. Um, but it looks like the financial issues are starting to hit to the point where he's like having to, to downsize his lifestyle is what it looks like to me. Once our expenses are paid off for the event, like all the minimums of like, you know, broadcasting, the hotel, travel, all that sort of stuff. Once that's all paid off, then we can start paying uh, the charities. Unfortunately, we didn't even reach the break even point, right? We're $250,000 in the red. I foolishly thought that the success of last year would, should be a minimum you know, a minimum for what we are able to do this year. And that wasn't true. There was a lot more to think about. I thought, okay. His explanation is wrong. You can generally accurately predict what your financial status is going to be. Um, he knew that he was not, he had not made his money back. There's no way he didn't. And if he didn't, that's pitiful. <laughs> he literally like, oh, I didn't know I lost a quarter of a million dollars until a month after the fact. Like you should have known that a month beforehand that you were a quarter of a million of dollars in the red before, before, uh, before the event happened and you had to do more to drum it up to make the money. It's kind of too late a month after the fact to be like, oh, wait, we didn't make any money. <laughs> okay. You know, we're, we're bringing on more talent. We're bringing on more creators that should translate to more pay-per-view buys. We're inviting more creator guests. I think that should translate to more pay-per-view buys. This is our second time doing the event, so more people are gonna know about it. So I thought that would translate to pay-per-view buys. But we did half as well as we did the first year. 50,000 compared to 100,000 the first year. So I it was wrong and I feel a lot of shame because a lot of people were trusting me and trusting our team to 
you know, protect the event and protect the charities and protect just the whole thing. It feels particularly bad because this isn't like a regular business where it's all a personal loss and I can just be like, oh, okay, I suck at business and I walk away from it. All of the other fighters were, you know, hoping that their charities got represented and got supported for all their hard work. But we didn't have any anti-piracy measures. We weren't prepared okay, to deal um, with. IDUBS unable to accept, accept the cataclysmic personal responsibility failures that were at play here <clears throat> has decided to address in an out what could possibly be hurting the business surely creator clash 2 should be more successful than creator clash 1 which by the way was successful without any of the things that he's complaining about happening this time around uh fairly interesting uh what ended up happening i mean i was for me, I was just thinking like, let's just avoid catastrophe. If, as long as there's like, not like, um, I don't know, like a bomb threat or like injuries or anything crazy, like we should be fine. This should just be like the first year. I don't want it to be more complicated than the first year. Uh, it ended up being a lot more complicated. Amongst the 800 pirated uh, streaming sites, there were between 1.3 and 3 million viewers. So even though there were around 50,000 uh, pay-per-view buys, there were around 1.3 to 3 million viewers. People those who actually sites, watched the video, everyone. everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, those sites, because I did, I ended up watching some, I, I watched the part where that uh, obnoxious bastard Morn sign got his head kicked in by an Aryan Giga Chad. Um, <clears throat> I watched that part and I noticed that on those sites, they have like the NFL, they have FIFA, they have like all these like major, major, um, like sport groups that were also available to watch. So I'm going to give you a hint, bro. If FIFA, one of the most powerful international media organizations that has ever existed in human history can't get some random cocksucker in Ukraine to stop pirating his streams. Uh, there's not a fucking thing you can do about it ever. And you should just consider actually getting people to want to buy what you have to sell because you're not going to be able to force them to stop. Just to, just to say no. And that's a little bit reassuring. You know, it, it makes me feel like, okay, people maybe do want to watch this. They just didn't, you know, they just either couldn't afford it or just didn't want to support uh, what I had going on. If it's one or two steps to pirate it, but it's three or four steps to stream it legitimately, people are going to take the pirating option every time. I think we also had a big streamer audience that's who we are appealing to i really like the live stream audience you know people who want to watch these events live and they watch things on twitch and youtube and they get it all for free generally so i think it was uh, in a lot of ways bad to appeal to that crowd and not give away the stream for free uh, i think a lot of them felt like well this should be something that's free uh, especially if you have ads in it. Aside from the pirating, you know, we did have higher... Here's a fun thought. You could have, if he's, okay, like, if he wants to go that route, you could give very high quality, you know, access to streams or feeds directly to, like, any high profile streamer who can't physically attend your event, but is willing to stream it. And then they could just do their own commentary and then they can set their their donations to a charity. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing that's built into Twitch and YouTube is that you can set up charity events. And if it's really is just a charity thing and you're concerned about, you know, the money going to charity, you can just have these other people promote your stream and do commentary over it and do fundraisers on their own using the footage since it's supposed to be like a nonprofit thing to begin with. Uh, that would be a not retarded idea. And that, and then people who want to pirate it would just watch, you know, whoever the fuck Jack Skeptikai do his live commentary for a charity purpose, and it wouldn't cost anybody anything, and it wouldn't be pirated, and he wouldn't lose out on anything. I guess that's too smart, though.
bigger expenses this year. It was a bigger arena. We went to the Amelie Arena, so it was twice as big. We paid more for broadcasting. So broadcasting team did a lot more elaborate shit and there was a lot more staff involved. We did a creator hotel. So we bought out a hotel to make sure all the creators had a, you know, a safe place that they can stay. It oh. actually ended up being good that we got the creator hotel because they bought an entire hotel and like 15 people showed up to it. I think that's what happened. All the hotels shot up in price, uh, like a couple weeks after we locked in the creator hotel because Taylor Swift was coming to town. She announced her tour dates and pretty much everything got booked up. If we didn't book the Creator Hotel when we did, I don't think we would have had nearly- Lesson learned. Don't book your event at the same time that Taylor Swift is coming to town. Uh, it's a bad idea. The creators show up to show support and our, our pay-per-view numbers actually could have been hurt by that. We also had events uh, the day before the fight and the day after the fight so that you know is, is uh, idub's going to become like a hate stalker of taylor swift is there going to be like a russell greer uh idub's team up to try and sue taylor swift and friends and family could come together and uh process their trauma that was sort of paramount for me because of the first year we did the fight and then i went to bed i got the shit kicked out of me by dr mike and then i went to bed and then i woke up the hotel was empty and then I got on a flight uh, and traveled five hours with my face completely swollen uh, back to Seattle. And I was like, that was cool. That was so worth it. I, 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 there was nothing. There was no processing my trauma. There was no talking to anyone and relating about the... You know, if you... No, look, I'm not like a, an expert in combat sports. Thank God. I don't watch boxing. I don't watch wrestling. I don't watch any of this. I am pretty sure that when you box even if you lose you're not supposed to be traumatized i think if you are traumatized after a boxing event that you participated in something is wrong something's not right i'm not like a, again i'm not like a boxer maybe maybe there is a thing i'm pretty sure that's not supposed to happen experience afterward everyone was gone and that shit felt awful. So yeah, some of these things that might seem extraneous, uh, in my opinion, were entirely necessary and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, I also, I mean, as evidenced by the, uh, by the pay-per-view streams, uh, it wouldn't have made a difference uh, because we did half as many pay-per-view sales. So we also had to pay for more fighters this year uh, the first year it was 18, this year it was 24. I thought bringing in more fighters would just lead to more pay-per-view buys, um, but I think it just ended up costing us more. Yeah, that only works if people know who the fuck is fighting. People who are like H3 podcast, like staff, were well, that's the one that got me. It's like, so you're, you, don't, you don't have Ethan, like I would, I would pay to see Ethan Klein in a fucking boxing ring against literally anybody, even a midget, but... Like you're just gonna have some random guy from his production staff to fight like nobody fucking cares about this person why would anyone pay to see this so yeah it is a mistake to pay for his training if nobody is going to pay to watch this guy you know because each fighter gets a twenty thousand dollar stipend and for anyone like confused about this or thought everyone was fighting for free they pretty much are fighting for free i think any of the fighters can attest to the fact that uh, fighting in Creator Clash is not a financial boon in any way. That $20,000 is eaten up in those nine months that you're training. I would say that $20,000 is on the low end of what it should cost you to train in those nine months. Because uh, you have to pay for your uh, trainer yourself and you have to pay for, you know, all of the, the food, the equipment, uh, the travel, whatever you're doing. Is, is there a version of boxing? or MMA combat sports where there's like no non like technical knockouts. You have to actually be like laying on your back. Is there like a rule set that requires that someone actually be physically laid out to end the round? I want to know because then I have a follow-up comment to make all this shit happen. Uh, you know, aside from putting your streaming career or your YouTube career or TikTok on hold while you're training, 
you know, it's not uh, a huge reward. So I don't want anyone to think just because these fighters are getting $20,000 to basically like just be a little bit less in pain after going through all this torment and trauma. Uh, I don't want anyone to get shit for that because that is a minimum of what these fighters should be getting. Okay. In my opinion, they should. So apparently the UFC didn't have tactic te technical knockouts in its first season. I said, so here's how I dubs can easily make not only the quarter of a million dollars back, but also another quarter of a million dollars for creator clash three have a huge success. The premier fight should be a UFC season one style combat between I dubs and Sam Hyde. If he really wants to get that money for that charity and for his own benefit, a Sam Hyde would immediately agree to this. But if you put, you would have so many people galvanized to pay to watch this in high quality. Well, I'm talking like four, 8K cameras. It's like six of them all over the place. Like, I want to see the sweat rolling off their faces. But if you want to make half a million dollars, iDubs, Creator Clash 3, ticket will be iDubs versus Sam Hyde. Season 1, UFC rules. That's that's how you do it, okay? I, I'm a, And then let Jack Skeptikai do it for free on whatever, for like the super, super chat charity money. I got this figured out. be getting much more because it is a traumatizing event and it takes a lot of time and dedication. That is the cost of putting on the event, in my opinion. Uh, I think other boxing promotions would like disagree uh, that, you know, fighters should be getting paid uh, this amount, but, you know, to, to each their own. Uh, what do I know? I, you know, we lost $250,000 on this event. Another thing I want to address is there are some people floating rumors around that we're pocketing money from Creator Clash. Yeah, chat. It, that's Listen extremely up. hurtful because You're hurting it has been nothing but the opposite. I understand that some people out there don't like me. I'm okay with that, but the the thing I'm not okay with is just lying to people and making up shit for the sake of like clicks. I mean, this is hard enough as it is. Like, I don't want to make this video telling people that we made half as much uh, or we sold half as many pay-per-views as we did last year. And what I absolutely don't need is people spreading rumors about us pocketing money. Uh, this has been a financial fucking catastrophe for me. We don't need that. And we don't need any of that shit for any of our other fighters because they, this has been a huge sacrifice for all of them financially, specifically financially. If you want to say that they're, they're earning boatloads of clout for fighting, sure, whatever you want to say, but this has been a huge sacrifice. I try not to view the pirated live stream. He can't say like how humiliated all these people are for being associated with iDubs. That's the real cause. I would be surprised if he could find anyone for a creator clash three. Like who the fuck wants to be associated with this retard? as malicious because i think the majority of people you know aren't malicious about it i think there were fifty thousand people imagine how traumatized they all are for being associated with just idols. said creator clash live stream and like instantly a bunch of shit popped up and it was just very easy for them to watch and uh i i really don't blame them for making that choice uh all i'm trying to do right now uh in making this video is to remedy it uh, that's sort of what I've been grappling with over the past couple of months is like, what the hell are we going to do? You know, I can't even think about doing a creator clash three. We lost money and there's no money for charity. So what are we going to do to solve that? Yeah, that's, I, a, I that's a good point. Who said that? Solid phase extraction has raised a, a very salient point that I feel needs to be addressed. It is strange that in the defense of Anisa throughout all the months leading up to the creator clash thing, that it was her brainchild, her event. She did all the work. I doesn't know how to do anything. He's just there to get kicked around. Ha ha. It's, it's all her. She's such a business genius, but yet when he has to do the apology video about what a fucking retard he is and how his event lost a quarter of a million dollars, uh, Anisa is nowhere to be found. He hasn't even mentioned her. And it's supposedly her thing. So why is it his fault when it's an, when it's not working, but it's her brainchild when it's this huge event? 
how very very strange very strange i don't have a good solution the best solution that i've been able to come up with is uh putting the full creator clash broadcast creator clash 2 broadcast on youtube for free for everyone to watch and uh just hoping and praying that people enjoy it and want to support it I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are, but I want to post the full broadcast on YouTube and I want to have like a fundraising goal. I know YouTube has like a fundraising thing, uh, but right now, uh, from what I've seen, YouTube doesn't allow multiple That's also charities true. to be listed. None of the charity. So there is a big drama about Froggy Fresh and how when he backed out, he made a stink about how I was like, well, you're kicking me out of this event and I'm, I'm here to support my charity. So I dubs like immediately donated. What was it? Like $60,000 to froggy Fresh's charity. So I bet you that froggy fresh in the end was the only one who had any money donated to his charity. Cause nobody else is getting their money donated to their char charity. <laughs> so, so somehow froggy fresh despite not participating in the event was the only one that actually got uh what he came for did in the fundraiser and there's not really very many good options for us to collect donations ourselves so i think we're just gonna have to have a singular charity represent uh represented in the video and then we'll put all the other charities in the description so if you want to donate to a specific charity that's where you can do it i want to make it right i want to make it more right i'm okay with us fucking up and taking a two hundred fifty thousand dollar loss i'm not okay with charities not getting any money i want to thank all the fighters and all the coaches and all the staff of the event and the fans who you know came to show support uh, it, it might feel like a big loss, but it was a lot of entertainment and, you know, a lot of good came out of it. A lot of people had unforgettable experiences and it will be a highlight of their lives. There's a lot of boxing Ooh. events where no money goes to charity at all, uh, ever. There's not even the, the chance that it goes to charity. Ooh. So I, I just want to thank everyone. It truly made a difference. Uh, that you came and supported. I'm just disappointed that I let everyone down. You know, I just made some strategically shitty decisions along the way. And uh, all of those decisions, you know, led to where we're at. I think it was dumb of me to say that we weren't going to make the broadcast available for free uh, like we did the previous year. I thought that that would bring in more pay-per-view buys because people would be like, oh, I'm not going to be able to watch it for free. Well, I'll definitely uh, buy so I can tune in. But I, I don't know. It either didn't have an effect or backfired, and I'm trying to learn from it. This year I have a lot on my plate, and, you know, I think my strategy going forward is to just be, uh, you know, completely candid with everything uh again it's hard i would normally keep all of this shit to myself but i i got but you were called out on it i gotta express myself i gotta tell you guys what's up i gotta express myself um, literally like gonna... like a se i think seven hours after people identify that no money went to charity Rock very coincidental inside but yeah I, additionally another thing that's you know been eating at me is that uh, someone is trying to take over Creator Clash. Um, I know that sounds like, a, I don't know, the plot of a video game or something, but it's, it's real. And uh, it's been taking up a lot of my time. So hopefully I don't have to talk about it in the future. But, uh, you know, if I do, uh, you guys are going to hear about it on this channel. If you're just coming across this so video and you have no idea what... Yeah, I'll leave it in it there. I've already gave my thoughts throughout it. But I there's one other update with iDubs uh, rounding back to charities. Um, he did a stream to try and get $250,000. And um, one of the, the $150,000 goal, it was a 24-hour stream. He had multiple goals. One of them at $150,000 was girl out. And now what you see here is the face of a man whose egg is cracking. As predicted months ago by yours truly, 
The iDubs transition arc is in full effect. He has gotten he has gotten over the 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 biggest hurdle to his transition. He has gone out in public in makeup in girl mode for the first time. And now that that's out of the way, there's nothing stopping him. He's looking in the mirror, he's feeling the euphoria, and he's thinking, I can do this. I can be who I was truly meant to be. So it's happening, ladies and gents. It's happening. Oh yeah, I I gotta say, but by, by the way, just uh, as a personal opinion, you know, as an expert on these matters, I would say that Idubs passes super well. He's he's definitely he's got girl mode down pat. He just has to learn the tricks of makeup, and wow, like that's. That's better than like 99% of the other transgenders that I see. He's like a top 1% true. And I think everyone can agree with this. I think everyone agree that items actually passes really super well. Uh, definitely girl modes. It definitely owns the girl mode. Okay. So yeah, big, big ups to iDubs. Um, there's other pictures of this I want to say. Oh yeah, here you go. He's in the process of getting the makeup on. It's happening. Uh, he was going to shave his head for effort. He gave up on like making. He gave up on making like, okay, $500, eat three spaghetti, one open coconut, 5k thro throat chop, 25k ice bucket challenge, which Anisa did. She just dumped a bucket of ice on him. 50k cinnamon challenge. 100k remove mustache as you can see this was a, a precursor to girly pop because otherwise obviously he has to shave to go girly mode habanero dinner and then there's like a full hundred thousand dollar gap between going bald so i don't know if he reached that but apparently he shouldn't have bothered hosting an event he should have just done a fucking stream and asked jack skeptica to donate a hundred thousand dollars to him and it would have happened Fascinating. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.